title I've given to my lecture is Across Ocean and Gender, Discovery the Unknown. And I've tried to talk about transgenderism and Amerigo Vespucci. I hope it's not turning his knees to Amerigo Vespucci, but that's what I would just try to do. I'm going to start my lecture talking about um, the pillars of Hercules, you know, the pillars of Hercules. Because in the ancient world, the pillars of Hercules were considered to be the extreme border of the civilized world. They were imagined to be placed at the Straits of Gibraltar, Spain, Morocco, or less that area, where the Mediterranean Sea meets the Atlantic Ocean. But the pillars are not only a geographical place, also a metaphor. And the metaphor for the limit of knowledge, the border where there is no longer our security to take everything under the control of our mind, and it can be dangerous to dare the unknown, because before people did not know what was beyond the pillars of Hercules. To put at risk the traditional way things have been seen, studied, and defined. When Ulysses decided to sail across the pillars, he had many difficulties. He passed the border. He trespassed all the warnings and prohibitions. Dante, here in Florence, so not only Amerigo Vespucci, but Dante. Dante sees Ulysses in Hell's Canto 26, punished for his desire to follow virtue and knowledge, perseguir virtude e conoscenza. The very moment he thought to see something, his ship is struck by a violent storm and Ulysses sinks in the deep ocean together with his fleet. This is the danger to break the rules in the ancient world, to defy nature, to defy the status quo, the system. But 500 years ago, died Amerigo Vespucci, and Amerigo Vespucci was a challenger, no? It has been told before. He's been a cartographer. It has been told that he discovered that Brazil was not on the outskirt of Asia, but it was another part. So it was really a very important explorer after Columbus. The hero who gave America its name, the one who dared to follow Columbus' courage to see more, what he called Mundus Novus, the New World. The Mundus Novus was um, the letter that he often wrote to, especially here to Italy, to, to Lorenzo the Pierfrancesco de Medici. Colombia, Venezuela, Cuba, Florida, Brazil, Brazil, and a lot more. Everything okay with my English so far? Okay. The voyages to discover new lands were financed by Spain and Portugal, hoping to find richness and gold. The Catholic Church tried to convince the indig indigenous, the native population, to become Christian, often without the instrument of persuasion. Violence. They killed men, women and children, set an entire villages to fire. We have to, to, to be honest and say the truth. Destroying their culture and tradition. In particular, conquistadores reported the sexual behavior of the people they met. Homosexuality was not a taboo, as in the civilized Europe. And there were a lot of transgender people accepted and respected in this society. For example, there was this shaman. The shaman were considered in many cultures of the Latin America, such as Aztecs, Mayas, Quechua, Mochica. The shaman were considered as people with two spirits, male and female. So they were kind of transgender in a way. 
and they were not discriminated, but they had their social position in society. They were considered as a, a kind of connection between men and the gods, the shamans. Um, but this was not respected by the conquistadores. There is one conquistador who was very, very violent about his people, and this conquistador's name is Vasco Núñez de Balboa. And he is very famous because he has been the first to have crossed the Isthmus of Panama to the Pacific Ocean in 1513. And he became governor of Santa Maria of Veragua. And to be honest, let's say that he liked that the women dress were worn by the women, not by men, but especially like the ornaments, the gold, that he stole and take with violence from this, from this women. And it was very often that these homosexual or, let's say, seniors and transgender were punished with fire or assaulting them with these big dogs. The new world had to be converted and normalized to forced heterosexuality, straight, in double sense, rules not to be broken. Europe was guided by the presumption to be culturally superior. Anything different to European religion and sexual rules had to be banned in a violent way. So let's say that the, the attitude towards the other was not an attitude of curiosity and of interchange. It was a kind, um, they, they came as um, witness of superiority, and anything different to them was considered to be banned. The desire to know is a natural human tendency. Men and women have endlessly tried to get a better quality of life. The pursuit of happiness, as stated in the American Constitution, People moved to one place to another to find water or food, to flee from dry land to fertile ground, to escape from feminine war, from dictatorship and violence, to democracy, freedom and peace. Vespucci, Amerigo Vespucci, was sincerely led by the human desire to discover the fourth part of the globe, why his commissioners had different motivation. They were, you know, let's say they were motivated by greed. People have gone from one nation to another, from one continent to another. Humanity doesn't keep still. We, all of us, are part of the eternal change of the universe. Even mountains change with collapses, erosions, and earthquakes. Our search for a better life does not concern only the physical, social, and cultural environment. It may have to do with something more intimate and personal. Our body. What is a body? Is it just a covering? Is it a burden? We just know that our body is what makes us alive. We can interfere with our body, try to change it, to cure it, to correct it, to transform it when we get sick, for example, with medicines, or when we consider it too ugly, so we try to do the best we can, you know, to be, you know, to be a little bit better, or when we are too fat, we go on a diet to try to change the battle where it's too slim, we try to eat more to be a little bit more healthy, you know? Or because we consider it as something sexually not belonging to us. That's my case. People who were born as male and feel themselves as female or the other way around. Um, I always say that the majority of people were born as male and feel as male and were born as female and feel as female. 
one problem less in life, you know. Uh, but it's not always like this. There are people who call themselves transgender who don't feel at ease with the sex they were born with. We call ourselves transgender, which I, like, I prefer to uh, transsexual, because transsexual is all, only about sex, etc. While gender is also about our attitude to life, our way to move, uh, the, the, our voice, uh, the way we see the world, the way we interfere with people. No, it's all more about gender, culture. People transitioning from one gender to another. We trespass our pillars of Hercules. The border of the security of the binary division, division man, woman. Because actually, when we go walking in the street and we see other people, the first question we ask ourselves is it a man or female? That's when, when we see someone we do not understand, we try to, because it's something that we want to know. So it's very important, this binary, binary in our culture, this binary division men and women. When we decide to make our long journey as transgender, with their religious, social rules, trying to reach our promised land, the Eldorado of the gender we feel more comfortable with. And the journey like Ulysses can be very dangerous. You know, episodes of transphobia, via violence. It depends where we live, because different from some Florence and Dubai, for example. It depends on the social and familiar context we live. Because even though we can live in New York, but if you are in a strange, let's say, conservative familiar context, still have these problems. Our ship, our little ship, our body, may shake with violence, contempt, discrimination, especially about job, abuses, mockeries, the little laughings, you know. <laughs> but we keep going on. In fact, I admire the courage of explorers like the speech. Those who put at risk their life and the fleet's life to follow their <coughs> conviction that the world is wider than the one. We know. It's the same nature of wish of astronauts on the moon first and then on Mars. It's the courage, let's say, of all transgender people who know that the body they were born with can't be considered as a narrow place never to be abandoned. It's the courage, let me say, of all those people who don't consider the body they happen to live with as an obstacle to do something, to dream. And I don't want to talk now about transgender people. I want to talk about something different. I want to talk about the recent Paralympics in London, called in London. Talking about Oscar Pistorius. This man who runs and is a champion of sprint runner, not although his legs, but thanks to his legs. So that's also what we must do as transgender people. Not although our body, we can become something different, but thanks to our body, thanks to the cultural intervention that we make on our body. And I want to conclude my lecture quoting Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> and the, con the American Consul talked a lot about prejudice, and it's very important to fight about. I have to say, it's not only a question of uh, homophobia or transphobia, I think it's a question of mental laziness. Because if you are taught in your life that if you are this ethnic group, then you are like that, if you are that sexual orientation, then you are like that. You become very lazy because you don't 
you know, you, you, you don't work with yourself, you know, to meet the other, to know the other, to make your own judgment, your own vision of the world. So your mind works better if you are, you know, ready to uh, meet the other and to make your judgment after knowing, post judicio, not prejudice, post judicio, after knowing someone. So let's finish with Rock Your Pictures quotation, not only don't judge a book by its cover, but about this other quotation, don't dream it, be it. And I think that my story, the story of Oscar Pistorius, the story of even, even women, because also women had to historically to fight to demonstrate they were capable of doing something, because in the past men thought that female and women couldn't do some words, couldn't vote because of their body. So, thanks to these people that we can teach all the other not to dream it, but to be it. Thank you.